So last week I decided to run Android for a week and see how it was. And to be fair, I quite liked it. And that phone I decided to pick was the Galaxy S24. Now, if I'm being honest, at first I was skeptical to switch over to this phone, but after everything that I had experience with with Android in the past, it kind of did put me off. I think I had reasons why I was angry at Android because I wanted Android to be good. But this time around, I absolutely loved it. So let's start off with the good things about this phone. So one of the things I absolutely loved was just being able to have my apps anywhere. I know it sounds stupid and before I was that type of person saying, oh, it doesn't matter. But being able to have my apps anywhere so I could have a second home screen where I could easily just click on icons made it so, so, so much easier and I absolutely loved that feature. Number two, I loved the design of this phone. It was fun. Fantastic. Now, when I tell you that this phone really, really changed my mind about how Android phones are, I would, I'm, I absolutely love the look of it. It looks sort of like an iPhone from the side, but from the back, the three cameras look fantastic. And now the bezels on the front being the same all the way around and just looking fantastic. Really made me like this phone's design. I mean, look, you can see in the, the videos that these phones look great. And I personally think ever since Samsung switched to this type of design, it really, really does just make the phone stand out and it really does have their own brand identity now. Number three was always on display. Now I know iPhone has this, but I love the way that they did it with Android. Well, when the always on display dims, it still shows your phone background. Now, yes, that was definitely taken from iPhone because on my S22 Ultra, the always on display is just like the normal always on display where it's just black and it shows you some information. Whereas this change with S24 once Samsung realized that people actually did quite like having their phone background as they're always on display. So personally, I really liked it and I, I do want to give it a shot on my iPhone now. But before I was always so against it because I just thought, well, the always on display is meant to be for, you know, a quick glance. It's not meant to show anything and I'm still very much in that camp for my iPhone. But just trying it for a week really made me realize that actually, you know what, it's actually quite a nice thing. Number four, I absolutely loved app management. Now, on iPhone, you may be thinking, well, we have app management, you know, we can put phone, we can put apps away, we can, you know, put them wherever we want them to. But in the app library, it automatically chooses where it wants them to be put. And for me, that's just so annoying. Let me pick where I want to put my apps, where I want to put my icons. And I just absolutely love being able to quickly just swipe up and I have all my apps there without having to worry about, you know, moving them, having them in the last page of the, my app screen. And for me, on iPhone, I have all of my apps, you know, everywhere on my home screen. I have about 50 pages on my home screen. So trying to get to the app library is a pain, if I'm being honest. Number five. Now... When I say I make decisions, it means I can make decisions on whatever I want on that phone. I can decide if I want the always on display to be nice, to be black, if I wanted to, the icons to have different themes, if I wanted, you know, my camera to be in 8K, 4K, 1080p. The camera app has loads of different things you can do with it. I mean, it was absolutely fantastic. Picture quality is brilliant. I absolutely love taking pictures on that phone. And I have the right to choose. If I want to do something, I can. I'm not so restricted. If I want to download an app off a third-party app store, I can. And I love having decisions, especially on that phone. It was so nice to just be able to do whatever I want. And that's what's made me now run two phones now. I now run an Android phone and an iPhone, just so that if there is a scenario where I need an Android phone that can do anything I need it to, it's there. I have the option. <laughs> Personally, I loved it. Now, number six, I've always been... A a very big advocate for this. Every time I go to Android, it's having the Google Assistant. Even though there's loads of AI things now, Siri just still sucks. It is terrible compared to Google Assistant. I just want to have it quickly to be able to go, hey, I need this, or hey, I need to be able to do this, or Google, can you have to answer me this question? Set this, do that. I love it. It's just brilliant having Google baked into the software experience. So everything is just defaulted to be in Google. Number seven, Samsung's ecosystem is absolutely brilliant. Now I have a Samsung TV, I have a Samsung tablet, and it all integrates really well. And when I, you know, started using this phone, I noticed that everything actually links in so well together. The TV links in well with the phone. The tablet links in well with the phone. You can share contacts. You can do everything you can do on iPhone on Samsung, but just with more devices. It's actually really cool. And their ecosystem is really, really underrated. So I personally think that anyone that's got an iPhone that's worried about switching over and the ecosystem being completely tanked, it works well. And that's what I personally think is a good thing. As Android is very universal. You can have different things in the ecosystem. You can have a MacBook. You can have an Android phone. And it works well together still because you can use all your Google messaging, you can use you can use nearby share if you use third party um, if you use a third party app on the MacBook. And personally, I think it's great. Number eight is having RCS support. RCS is just something that is needed as a necessity. Now, this is a pain for my friends that, you know, were on iPhone and I was messaging them, but I didn't notice anything different. 
but I was having to use SMS most of the time because of iPhone. And it is really annoying when RCS is just the better standard and it's just better in general. But having it on Android as default is great for if I'm messaging people from Android to Android. And RCS is definitely the future and I'm glad that iPhones are finally adopting this. Number nine has to be USB-C. Now I know iPhones have it, but it is just a great thing overall to have. And you know, just being able to use my MacBook charger for my phone, use my MacBook charger, for my MacBook and just being able to transfer high quality videos over USB-C is great. Now I still have an iPhone 14 Pro Max that has lightning and personally, I just think that USB-C is better and I cannot wait to get an iPhone that has USB-C. Now number 10 has to be having actual Google Chrome. There is nothing worse on iPhone than having Google Chrome that is Google Chrome, but it's actually Safari. It's so annoying and having Google Chrome just baked in, being able to use it and it's probably Google Chrome, is just way better. Now, unfortunately, this phone does have some bad aspects and I hate talking about them, but I noticed them more than I noticed the good stuff. And for me, it didn't ruin my experience overall, but it definitely made me realize that if I was to ever have an Android phone, I need to have both. I need to have an iPhone and an Android phone for my ecosystem to work. And that's why having an S22 Ultra and an iPhone 14 Pro Max works well in my ecosystem, because I can use the S22 Ultra for the things that I want to do on Android. And iPhone, I can get all the things that my Android phone can't do as well on my iPhone. And number one, that has to be social media. Social media is just so bad on Android. Why? Why in 2024 does TikTok still not have a dark mode? Why? I mean, open the camera app on TikTok. It is absolutely terrible if you have an Android phone. The FPS drops, the video looks weird. And I just think not having dark mode is such a basic feature. Having camera improvements in the TikTok app is better. Having those subtle vibrations that you get when you like a video, when you share a video on Android, why not? We have this all on iPhone and I notice this stuff and I know it seems stupid, but this stuff I notice. And if you have an Android phone and an iPhone, you notice these things and it's not fair. Snapchat has only just got a dark mode on Android. That's crazy, absolutely crazy. Open Instagram, everything is just way bigger than it needs to be. It's a lot slower than it needs to be. And just sometimes opening the, the camera app in the Instagram or in TikTok or in Facebook, just slows the phone down slightly and I'm, it just confuses me as to why. Now, the best thing that I found in social media is Snapchat. Now, that is because, you know, Samsung did work directly with Snapchat, but that is the best app I found that, you know, uses everything to do with that with that Samsung phone all in one. Now, it still didn't have as many things as the iPhone in terms of having the subtle vibrations here and there, but you will have to, to forgive that if the camera experience is actually good. Number two, the fingerprint sensor. Now, it's good. But it's just not as quick. And I noticed that, you know, with Face ID, you get so used to just swiping up to unlock your phone that it does just make it a lot easier. Paying for stuff, Face ID, using banking apps, Face ID. It's seamless. You don't even think about it. Your face is there all the time. If your fingers are wet, it doesn't work. You know, if your fingers are dirty, it doesn't work. It's a pain. And for me, I do prefer Face ID, but I also do see the need for fingerprints. So I think having them both is a good mix. Now, you may be saying, well, Samsung does have Face ID. But it's not proper Face ID with true depth cameras like the iPhone. Number three, definitely has to be video on Android. Now, you may be saying, oh, well, you know, you said that it was good in Snapchat or this and that. I'm not even talking about just in social media apps. I'm talking about in the native camera app. Video just isn't as good. And for me, I film a lot of video. So having my iPhone as a really good video camera is a necessity to me. I absolutely love the way that iPhones do video. I just don't understand why now in 2024, Android cameras can still not get video right. So that is just one thing I definitely have to say is if you want something that's, you know, good for video, go with iPhone because you just won't get the same experience out of an Android phone that you will from an iPhone. So I have now got both phones here recording and I don't really know how this is going to look. In my opinion, I personally think that the iPhone is going to look better. Just going based on my experience with video. Um, I don't know. You guys tell me down below what you think. Um, yeah, it's an interesting thing because, you know, I'm looking through my monitor now at these different things and you know i just noticed that th these phones like the s24 is good don't get me wrong it's not terrible but i just think it needs that little bit of a nudge it needs that slight bit extra to match the iphone's level but don't be wrong don't get this twisted this phone has still got an amazing camera video and i think that most people won't notice it unless you've come from iphone you know, you just get that slightly more toned down. Now, you can actually change some settings, vivid and natural, but I'm doing everything, you know, just the basics. No, this is what the phone came as. I'm not going to change anything. This is how Samsung wants it to be, so that's how I'm going to keep it. Number four. Now, I did say this in my S22 Ultra video, but the gestures just aren't as good. Like, 
On iPhone, gestures are smooth, they're fluid. You don't get this weird juddiness. Whereas on here, the best way to use an Android phone is definitely through the navigation bar. I personally think that gestures on Android are fantastic for being able to you know, swipe back from the edge and using the back button. But it's just not good at swiping up multitasking. It's just way better to have the navigation bar. And I personally think that Android, Google, Samsung need to work together to make gestures better. Number five. Now, I don't know if this is just my experience or if I use my Android phone too much or just something. But there is always a slight lag it feels when I'm doing something. Whereas on my iPhone, it normally it feels like everything's working smoothly, fluidly. With my Android phones, it always feels like there's a slight lag when doing something. I don't know why that is. I don't know if that's just me imagining it, but it just feels like there is always a slight lag every time I try and do something, which I understand maybe, you know, just part of Android and Samsung working with Android. But it's just definitely not normal. I definitely think that that needs to just be looked into. Why are phones just randomly getting that slight little bit of lag? And it's just ruining my experience. Make that better, Android. Make that better, Samsung. Please. Number six definitely has to be battery life. Now, I do forgive this phone because I was on S24 with a 4,000 hour milliamp hour battery. And I understand I use my phone a lot. I average five to six hours of screen time a day. I need a big battery. My iPhone 14 Pro Max struggles, my S22 Ultra struggles. It just does. And I, you know, completely understand why that phone wouldn't have got through a full day. I did get used to charging it, you know, twice, every so often, you know, just getting used to that. Now, does that mean that I didn't like the phone? No, I got used to it. And I do think that if I was to have a, a phone with a slightly bigger battery, my phone would last me the whole day. Number seven. Now it does feel like you have to do a lot of RAM management. Now this sounds stupid, but on iPhone, you don't really have to worry about closing apps in the background and you know changing stuff and worrying about the RAM usage. Whereas on Android, I feel like you do. You have to worry about constantly what you're doing, you know, if it's actually gonna work, if, it, if things are actually gonna run smoothly, if this app's open, you just have to make sure that you're actually focusing on doing RAM management. Whereas on iPhone, you really don't have to think about it much. Number eight is Call Assist. Absolutely fantastic feature if you want to translate or you actually need to use it. But for me, I have my phone up against my ear and my cheek would press on Call Assist and it would just start a random voice on the call, scare the other people on the call. And it's just really, really annoying. Please fix that Samsung. Please fix Call Assist. Number eight is Wi-Fi calling. Wi-Fi calling was the bane of my life when I was on Android. It just tries to use Wi-Fi calling when there's either no Wi-Fi or the Wi-Fi is too weak and it's switching in between Wi-Fi calling and regular calling and making the overall experience for everyone else really bad. I had to move locations five, six times just to be able to get a good calling experience for me and for the other people that are listening to my voice. So please fix Wi-Fi calling Samsung. It is ridiculous. Just if you're going to call on Wi-Fi calling, stay on Wi-Fi calling. If you're gonna come off Wi-Fi calling, stay off Wi-Fi calling, please. And number nine has to be vibration. For some reason, the vibration motors on these Samsung phones are just terrible. I would miss calls, messages, multiple times because this thing could just not give me a good vibration. I couldn't feel it. And the only time I'd ever notice it, if it was on the desk and it would vibrate through the desk. That's the only time I'd notice vibration. So overall, would I recommend the S24? If you're looking at buying a Samsung phone and you know what you want, if you want a small compact phone that's gonna give you amazing cameras, an amazing display, an amazing Android experience, then the S24 is perfect for you. But if you need something bigger, you do have the S24 Plus, which packages everything the S24 does fantastically into an even bigger form factor. And I think for a lot of people, the S24 and the S24 Plus are gonna be two amazing options because the S24 Ultra is fantastic, but it's only really for those people that are enthusiasts, that need a phone that can do the absolute most, that's got the best, brightest display, the, the best cameras in the industry. Whereas the S24 and the S24 Plus Plus, focus on making sure that everything is perfect. Everything is good for what you need to do and nothing is too insane to the point where it's going to drain your battery life or where you're going to experience bugs. It just does everything correct. And I think that if you're looking for a small compact phone, the S24 is being amazing. And I absolutely loved every single day of using it. And it's really opened my eyes up to how good Android can actually be. This is the iPhone of Android. The S24 series, does everything correctly, and I cannot recommend this phone 
more. I genuinely think that if you want an Android phone that's going to give you an iPhone-like experience, the S24 is the way to go. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to like, subscribe. It's been Harry. I'm out. Peace.